Welcome to another episode of The Hall Gap. I'm your host, Skandar Thiek, and as always, I'm joined by... Your other host, Sophia Alani. And the man behind all the mixers and the cameras and everything today, Hamada, where are you at, man? <laughs> he refuses to speak, so... <laughs> So that's my that's my Hamada impersonation. <laughs> so. I, I, I personally think I nailed it. But anyway, <laughs> we have a great, great, great guest for you guys today. Hopefully you enjoy it. Sophia, take it away. After starting out with a successful music career, he transitioned into comedy, appearing in multiple feature films, and founded Halaliwood, a multimedia platform for Muslims worldwide to share their stories. Halaliwood provides opportunities for Muslims of all ages to act, write, produce, and direct without compromising themselves or their beliefs. He was the host of the 2018 Moscow Film Festival and is among the top 10 Muslim writers, directors, producers, actors, and comedians known worldwide. Please welcome Omar Regan. Woo! Woo! Oh, man. Then when you say it like that, it's like, oh, man. <laughs> thank you, God. Thank you. <laughs> tears, of, tears of joy and pride in all of our eyes. It's beautiful. beautiful. Right, right. It, this is so good. First off, thank you all for having me. This is the Moscars. Listen, I had so much fun at oh, the Moscars Film Festival. Oh, uh, I, I was like, it was really great. It was... Um, oh, we- it has such of a buzz of energy, man. It was it was really yeah, nice. Y'all really yeah. did amazing. Right we loved having yeah. you. And, we did. Uh, before we dive in, I feel yeah. I don't know if you remember Omar, but at the when we were doing the awards presentation component, <laughs> there was like a bit of a mix up, and you and I had to go back and forth a little bit. Afterwards, I had a bunch <laughs> of people come up to me being like, "Oh, you guys were totally spoofing the Oscars, right?" When they they confused between Moonlight and. Uh, and La La Land. What is that movie? La La Land. Yeah, La La Land. I was like, yeah, yeah, totally. That was La La all Land, set yeah. up. You guys yeah. coordinated that. It was yeah. perfect. It was beautiful. Did you be like, did it work? Yeah, yeah, did it work? Yeah, yeah, did it work? Right. Did you guys like it? The joke landed? <laughs> awesome. No. Yeah. So uh, we appreciate you coming and joining us today, man. This is this is very, very uh, exciting for all of us here. So thank you for making the time. Yeah. So uh, you're you're well, in London sure. right More now. Welcome. What are you what are you doing over there? I know. I'm in London. Let me can y'all can I tell y'all wait, can you see this? It's still daylight. It's about to be nine. Uh, well, it's like eight, twelve p.m. It doesn't really officially get dark until like uh, maybe a little after ten p.m. And they only have like five hours of nighttime. So, like the dawn is literally by four, a little after four a.m. By four thirty, it's broad daylight. Yeah. That's like us too. Edmonton's yeah. like that too. Ramadan in the summer. Is oh, you guys, are like, yeah. <laughs> you guys are like. You guys are like. <laughs> and yeah. you're saying this no. why? <laughs> Ma- yeah. Ma- <laughs> Margaret for us is around 11 p.m. in like the peak July time. Oh, I'm sorry <laughs> I brought that up like it was a big deal. <laughs> you guys are looking at me like, dude, really? Stop. No, no, but it, it is cool when you don't, when you're not used to that. Like I would send pictures. My uncle lives in Houston. I would send him pictures all the time of like, yeah, I was like, dude, it's like 1030 and like the sun is still shining. And he's like, what is wrong with your country? I was like, listen. Yeah. And he'd be like, hey, we over here living. We have all, all of the daytime. daylight, baby. Yeah. Except in the winter, which is. Yeah, then the winter is the exact story. opposite. Yeah. The sun rises at like 830 oh. and then sets at like four. Yeah, <laughs> so then it's wow. then it's a bad but that's time. That's when we have, you know, the, the good time Ramadans. It's. It's all good. Then you still good have a late lunch yes. and you get to yeah. go. Out. Yeah, good. that's right. So um, we, we like to start at the beginning in these podcasts. So, so tell us a little bit about where you grew up, your childhood. We'll start right at the beginning. Wait, I have a question. Oh, okay. Oh, it's oh, so hard. No, no. Before we dive He into never that. told us what he's doing in oh, London. Oh. <laughs> I guess we need to know that. I'm running away. I'm running away. Okay, the, the guy that's there. I'm running away. Even yeah. though this guy is not that that different, but the guy that we have, he just wanted to tell Omar Regan. No matter where he runs, he can't hide. He can't hide. I know people everywhere. I know them. I have friends. They're amazing. They'll do good. They'll find you. I assume. I won't tell you how. Maybe I'll tell you how they find you another time. But they'll find you. <laughs> I assumed you were you were purposely <laughs> avoiding the question, which is why I didn't uh, I didn't dive in. I, you know? I, I, <laughs> He's hiding. Oh, no, no, sorry. no, man. I'm I'm really I'm really grateful to be in London. Uh, I have a home here, um, and I'm taking advantage of writing. I was in Los Angeles for six months, but I do have a film uh, that I'm writing with. I don't know if you guys know Maria Idrisi. 
Um, she was the first H and M model, oh, Muslim oh, hijabi yeah. Muslim model for H and M. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but we have been we have been uh, talking about a project for a while now. We uh, did a we did a video together with Zane Bika in South Africa, and then now we actually put our plans into action. So I'm happy she's based right here, cool. and um, we just we got some. You know, it's I, I think, you know, you guys would really love it. I wish I could uh, tell you everything right now, but just hold okay. on. You would really love. Let me okay. tell you about it. Um, no. All right. We, we want to get into that for sure. For sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, we, we can yes, talk about it right yes. now or we can talk about it a little later because we will cycle. We'll circle back up to, to hear what you're working on. Uh, in, in a little I got bit. you. So I we'll, got we'll you. touch on that. Then. But before we before we jump there. Let's start at the beginning. So tell us a little bit about where you grew up, your childhood, all that fun stuff. Once yes, upon a time. Exactly. Origin story. <laughs> there was a young man by the name of Omar Rike. Now, listen, um, I'm born and raised in Detroit, Michigan. Uh, my mother converted to Islam. I was five years old um, and we grew up learning Islam. And so we went through all of the, we went through the haram version <laughs> of everything is haram. There was, fun was haram. <laughs> like, and there was none of that. You should be reading Quran, you know I mean? Like you couldn't do any fun or anything. And so growing up, I felt trapped. We was trying to find out how, what was our, I didn't know what my personality was. I didn't like, I didn't even know my name. Let me tell you, because because when everybody was teaching us when you become Muslim, you change your name, right? So I'm five, they started calling me Omar before the Arabic, oh, right? So as I grew up, Omar, 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 I was. And then um, my last name was Abdullah. So every time in school, it was just Omar Abdullah, Omar Abdullah. I didn't even know Omar Regan. I didn't know Omar Regan. I know you didn't know Omar Regan. And until I'm like 15, right, where I am. Um, I start going after getting my license and stuff. And now my license say Omar Regan, but everything stay Omar Regan. And then even my rap name at that time was O, short for Omar Regan, you know, and I would spell it O-O-H. Yeah, get down with the O. <laughs> oh, right. Amazing. So, it, was, um, it was interesting how even when I came to Hollywood, I left Detroit. That was the only time that I really reintroduced myself to myself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because people, I was like, wow, it's the only time I really had to really just start using my name all the time, Omar Regan, Omar Regan. And then when they invited me for Hajj, you know, so I was like, Omar Regan. I was like, wait, wait, wait. I felt less Muslim than everybody else. So, could you guys, could you call me Omar Abdullah? It was like, your, your passport, your passport. Yeah, I mean, passport is, uh, and the passport says Omar Regan. Regan is this Regan, right? And it was, it was really interesting I can times. imagine I can but yeah. imagine I mean you, you, you touched on it but you, you and your brother started uh, a hip hop group a rap group when you were very young were you always drawn to music as yeah. kind of that outlet as a child I was drawn to it because we didn't know what else to do Sekunder <laughs> like we was like man a after a while um, we started doing what we used to call as vickers <laughs> they call them nasheeds <laughs> today but we was <laughs> <laughs> we was beating pots and pans it's like we needed an outlet and i wrote let me tell y'all my first song i remember my first song it was amazing i tell i can even tell you the lyrics to this first song this is exactly what i wrote i'll start for a law 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 I'll stop for a law, stop for a law, stop for a law. I'll stop for a law, stop for a law, stop for a law. That'll get stuck in your head. Man, listen. That's a banger. I mean, people was wasting, t they was wasting time with all of the other words and stuff. It was, I was like, no, I got the hit. Oh my goodness. That was my first That's song. Awesome. That's awesome. And then, and, then, and then as we, you know, my father was supportive because remember we were, learning islam so he would start saying oh this is we can do this this is this is lawful we could do this and we, this we could beat the duffs we could we was going through that whole thing until i actually started writing lyrics and then he was like man do it as poetry the poets yeah the poets man and so i kind of went that route 
even though I didn't really get the, the touch weed of the mm. poets at that time. You know the touch weed of the poets. If the light has shined, <laughs> I will rhyme. You know. I got you, yeah. <laughs> right, right, right. I didn't really, I didn't know because we couldn't watch. We couldn't, we could only watch Kung Fu movies and stuff like that. So <laughs> in my, in my beginnings was interesting, but this is my path of what led me to um, this creative mind. Also, we used to, I used to, I didn't know when we watched Kung Fu movies, when we had watched all the Kung Fu movies, we would make our own Kung Fu movies in the living room. I mean, yes. Like literally, it would be like, (laughs) right. Oh my goodness. You want to challenge me? (laughs) And we would, we would run around the living room. That is incredible. <laughs> That's dope. So, so you so. were actually um, the you doubled for Chris Tucker in Rush Hour too. So then, was that like a dream come true? It was the biggest dream. Let me tell you, like the reason why that becomes such a big deal wasn't because one wasn't just because of Chris Tucker. It was also because of Jackie yeah. Chan. Yeah. So I knew all of the kung fu movies that Jackie Chan was in. Right. And I picked the one Chinese Kung Fu movie where Jackie Chan didn't talk until the end of the movie. And he wasn't he wasn't silly. Right. I picked that movie when I met him to mention him. And he was like, I'm going to tell him y'all. I'm going to tell him what they mean. And that was it. I was in his good grace. I knew what I was doing. What was the movie that you mentioned? The Shaolin Wood Men. All right. I that one. This movie, listen, I don't even, I don't even know if you can find yeah. that movie now, but put a hunt out. I mean, you guys out there, that's Albert, yeah, yeah, right? Oh, yeah. we got we got connects in Albert. Yeah, we got Albert, some movies Albert, over there. Albert, <laughs> we Alberta, no, it. no, Albert be knowing yeah, yeah. people, man. I, I heard about Albert, man. She be knowing people, you know. <laughs> so it is. So it is. She could get her hands on this movie. <laughs> no, no doubt, no doubt. That's awesome. So, but that that yeah. was my uh, to kind of just to tell you, I, that's how we went into the music. And then we did that whole thing with Eminem yeah. and no, I to, wait, yeah, Boys I to Five to Nine. That because the hip hop scene in Detroit at that time was it was legendary, right? I mean, you had so many prominent rappers coming up in the scene in Detroit at that time. From like you mentioned, Proof and yeah. you know Royce to Five Nine, Eminem, yes. and obviously you guys. I mean, what what was it about Detroit at that time that was creating this incredible you know surge of hip hop talent? Amazing. It was really just amazing. We, I mean, to, we were actually happy to be a part of it. We were known as the Conscious mm-hmm. Brothers. So, um, to be to be friends with Proof, like it was normal for us because it, we were all in that we're, we're all in the circle. But we weren't too tight with everybody because we were Muslim, so that right. we didn't go hanging out as much as everybody were bonding and hanging out because we didn't do certain things that sure. other was, others was doing. Um, which kept our relationship, you know, maybe not as tight, but it was always respectful and always yeah, love. Yeah, yeah. So I never like to make it sound like, man, I was used to roll with Eminem. I don't like the misleading conversation. I like to, we were there. We knew him. He knew us. He knew my, he knows my brother a lot more. My brother's in his videos and everything because I left. I got tired of not making any mm-hmm. money. Um, and uh, the whole record label business, when we didn't sign that record deal mm-hmm. and all that, it just went south. I was like, I, I want, I know what I want to do after I did the first audition. I left Detroit and went to L.A. But all those guys, man, now, you know, and once you space out the time, you know, it's just all love. Like, oh, mm-hmm. and we remember each mm-hmm. other. You know, and it's just good when we can see yeah, each other, yeah, yeah. even though I haven't seen a lot of those people no, in forever. No, it makes sense. I mean, you know, you guys were very unabashedly Muslim, too. I mean, your name was SOA, Servants of Allah, right? I mean, that's not, you're not <laughs> yeah. trying to make any, it's not a secret. any qualms about this. I mean, it is what it is. Was that well-respected at the time? I mean, this is before hip-hop and was. Islam was like a lot more inter- intertangled, I feel. It was respected. It's kind of, and I'm going to tell you the reason why we yeah, were good. Yeah, fair. I mean, like, we were really good. We were like, my brother, man, I didn't even know that he really knew how to write like he wrote. But when he started writing the hooks and then I had this kind of a marketing writing of what would, you know, 
what how we could actually present this thing and he had this lyrical wordplay that was just good and it just really yeah. worked and man we were good that everybody was like yo even krs1 was like i want to go after yeah. them like we were having and we you know they wouldn't call us soa you know like because we would serving was nice but slaves we were going with the hardcore word oh, slave yeah. Oh, yeah. Of a while. like oh my goodness it was crazy <laughs> so, um but yeah we had it was a good run um it was it was just it was really yeah. good man it was really good times even when i sit back and think about it and the songs that we was we were writing my loyalty's to one one one, my loyalty's to one, <laughs> nice. one, you know, and it was, it was, it was just, it was good times, awesome. man, alhamdulillah. Yeah. But I didn't have to tell you this part, though. When we got into the Universal Record um, label thing, they was like, guys, can you, it was my fault. Let me, <laughs> I take full responsibility for this. It was my fault. I wrote a, um, a record about getting money, which I had never did that before, but it was a challenge for me from another rap friend and he met his manager and he was like, they pay for all of our studio time. So you should meet him. And so when I met him, he was like, can you write to this beat and put it on? And then I wrote, you know, I'm chasing cheddar, sharp my mozzarella, good fella, high walk under umbrella. Right. I started writing. Right. And then he was like, oh, that's good. That's good. It's your song. And then I came to my brother and was like, hey, listen, I'm writing about getting this. He was like, are you crazy? My brother was so much stronger than me. I was like, let's get the money. We can come back to Slaves of the Law. Let's get the money. Let's get it. He was like, no. But Universal said, so since you guys have this, they have a buzz. You have a buzz in Detroit. Everybody knows you as SOA. We have an idea. We can keep the SOA. E-S-S-O. S-O is that in Latin and way. And we can market it where you guys do it that way. Mm-hmm. That way is the way you do it. Yes. S-O-A. Okay. And we can keep their name there. It was, it was, it was so bad. <laughs> but they were so serious. Away. It was so serious. And uh, my brother was like, no. <laughs> and then he got mad. He went and told my dad, Allah bless him. <laughs> and I was like, kind of like. Yeah, it's like man, and then it all fell uh, apart. But um, yeah, I mean, you know, you touched on it, and obviously, I'm, I'm, I'm sure it was a very difficult decision. But you know, you, you mentioned that you got a, a record offer from from Tommy Boy Records, which at the time, you know, was like a hit maker, right? I mean, they had Queen Latifah and Africa Bombado and like a bunch of big names. What like they were marketing us as like the next yeah, mob deep. Yeah, which is huge. But it was, you so know like what, what I mean? What you know, what what motivated you to say no and what what was that decision process like? I didn't oh, say did? no. I yeah. didn't say no. Okay, My brother said enough. no. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, let's get the money and we can build a mosque <laughs> chair. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Oh, man. He, he said no. He was like, no. I was like, man, what is he was like, you so corny, dude. Why are you so corny? I was like, they used to call me the Diddy of the group. They, well, it wasn't Diddy at that time. Puff, it was Puffy of, course, yeah. of the group. Mm. It was the Puffy of the group because I was always, I wrote this song that was on the Battle of the Beats on a record, right? I talked my brother into putting a verse on the song because he wouldn't do it. He was just, he was more hardcore rapper, right? And the song, the the hook of the song was yeah, 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 yeah. right? <laughs> and hold on, right? I was like, call me Papa Donna, I'm Mexicana, <laughs> right? <laughs> this is the time when Latin and hip hop was coming together. This is right before J Lo and all of those guys start doing all of these records. So I knew I saw something, and people were like. How you gonna write a song called Yeah, Yeah, Yeah? <laughs> and they were really bashing me, but we did really good on the Battle of the Beats. And we were on the Battle of the Beats for mm. weeks. We were winning, we were winning. That's how the record label mm. called. But anyway, after all of that just went down the drain, who comes up later and makes another hit? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> sure. Usher. 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 Oh <laughs> and I was like, I told you. I told you. <laughs> Told y'all they was bad mouthing me every time about the yeah 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 yeah, and I was like he come out yeah yeah do the yeah yeah I was like he said the same thing. That's awesome. Oh my goodness. 
so, so good. So, good. so oh, I also like I you mentioned how, you know, they wanted to change your name uh, and kind of change who you were and kind of potentially like affect like the integrity of your image and like why you were doing what you were doing. So tell us about like how that felt and as a Muslim, as a person in the industry, and then also I feel like there's a good transition here to how Halaliwood happened. Um, and tell us about that. They sound, and let me tell you something, Sophia, they sounded right because the guy literally said, so you guys name is SOA, Slaves of Allah. You know, this song about going into the club and getting money, it doesn't really represent the slaves of Allah and that, of uh, you know, that consciousness that it brings, you know what I mean? It doesn't represent, we don't want to disrespect mm. that, but we do want to keep the name. I was like, man, he's a yeah. shit. <laughs> no. It's Mark, marketing genius right there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I was with it. I was like, yeah, I don't want slaves of a lot of me talking about all of that dunya, you know. <laughs> Hold on, right? I knew a little bit about a little bit. Right? So, oh man. So um, yeah, they sounded right, but ultimately, it didn't happen. My brother was like, No, I don't want to. You know, I don't want to do that deal. And then the deal, they, they wanted to sign me as, as sign us as a group, as a duo. They didn't want to just sign me by myself. So that left, uh, and that left me to, I went this way. My brother went, the, you know, I went to focus on, I, oh, I got an audition during that time. And I went to focus on acting. And then he went, surprisingly, which, you know, I still have an issue with this to this day, to the day, the guy went battle rapping you know, and sign. My brother was signed on Iron Fist slash Shady oh, Records what? under on, under Eminem. Yeah, and it was grimy. Oh man, it wasn't like you know, Mark. It wasn't like marketable like what I was doing. I was doing all the radio songs, but this guy was grimy. <laughs> like him, Proof. He's got songs with Proof. Um, man, who else you know? Proof. Oh. And I'm, I'm, I'm spat. Okay, bizarre. Do the D12. Oh, yeah. oh, He's yeah. my brother. Songs <laughs> nice. with them. He's on the songs. He was on Toy Soldiers video with Eminem. They was what, they what was, was your, like your he was coming uh, out like rap. Moo. Oh, this guy. Mm -hmm. Moo. Mm. Moo. Moo. The boy is so okay. good. I'm telling you, I was like, but he's so <laughs> grimy. Even my father was like. Man, why you gotta be so ruthless <laughs> on the record? <laughs> <That's awesome. laughs> oh, but our brother, he's really good, man. Like the wordplay, I was for Detroit. He was actually labeled one of Detroit's top yeah. MCs. Mo, yeah. amazing, yeah, amazing. yeah. So he said Moore has some lyrics that was amazing. <laughs> so you you mentioned yeah. you went on an audition. So like while the music was happening, were, were you also acting? Yes. Were you also like what was that like? I, want, I didn't know, I just had got the word. Like, I didn't know what to do as far as acting. It was just, it was like always a dream, stuff we would do on the side of the living room until being inside of the circle, I got, they was like, yo, I got the word. You They, they have an auditions, man. You should go read for the audition. And so then I was like, okay, all right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna go read for the audition. You know, and I did really good. I don't know if you guys know Brandon T. Jackson. Uh, no, I don't think no. so. He's in lottery ticket. He's in like uh, he's in. Uh, um, anyway, you'll yeah, know him. Yeah. You see him, Brand T. Jackson. So we were all at the same. And the girl Mari Mari from Def Jam, yeah. How to Be a Player. So we were all. I auditioned with her. Um, Brandon T. Jackson also did. He was like, and the director was from Detroit. He said, "Look, I just want to give." you know, opportunities for my fellow Detroiters, but we don't have no big budget for this movie, but it's HBO. All you got to do is get to California. And that was a, that was the hassle because I was like, I'm going to get to California. I got no money. I'm going to get there. So I made it though. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a miracle. <laughs> so was it thinking to just focus on acting and comedy then at that point, or was it to do that in addition to the music career? 
You know what? I'm glad you asked that question because let me tell you something about me and my comedy career. Okay, when I was in Detroit, I started doing. I was like, I stepped on stage. I thought it was fun. I loved comedy. For, I was inspired by people could stand up and tell their jokes, and people would be laughing, and I would be laughing, and I was like, this is so amazing. When I saw Chris Tucker on Dev Comedy Jam, it just blew my mind. I was like, he's just really telling all of his stuff. I want to tell my stuff, and people laugh. So I just went to. The amateur night and other people was in my ear like, you should go, you should go. Coco was having an amateur night. I went Wednesday night and I was just jumped up on stage and I froze. Mm -hmm. It was people in the audience. They was looking at me and this guy in Detroit, he jumped up. He said, you better be funny, blank, blank. (laughs) And I was like, oh, and then I didn't know what to Mm -hmm. say. And I just froze and the DJ started saying, get, 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 get yeah. out of here, get, 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 oh, get out of here. And they started shaking keys and people were, boo, oh, my God. boo. And then that was it. I was in the back. Uh, they walk wow. off of the stage, do the walk of shame. And I don't, to this day, I don't know what made me go back the very next week and do the same thing all over again. Like, I just must have liked it. I don't know why. <laughs> They called me back up. I went back the next Wednesday. I went back up on stage. Wait, I started trying to do a Chris Tucker impersonation oh. <laughs> to, to save me, right? I, I was like, man, wait a minute, man, wait a minute. The guy, the, guy, the guy in the audience said, the guy said, he said, man, shut up. You ain't no GD Chris Tucker. <laughs> I, was so, I hid in the back. Okay, because this is the time I didn't want people to see and be pointing like, that's the guy that got booed off right there. I, I hid in the back, man, before everybody to leave so I can come out of the club. But it was a one comedian who uh, who pulled me to the side and was like, listen, man, look, you starting out too big. It's 350 people out there. You go to a smaller club and, mm-hmm. you know, try to work your way to get your first laugh. And I was like, skip that. I'll never do this again. I'll never do it again. I won't. And I had I quit comedy at that moment. I just accepted that it wasn't for me. Um, it was for someone else. And then I was with these producer friends, but they were talking about making a movie in Detroit. And then we went to a comedy club because he was like, we're going to scout for more talent. And then the guy was having the comic was having an off night and people just was tired of seeing him. And he wasn't funny that night. And then when we walked, the producer was like, we got a comedian right here. He's funny as heck. Mm -hmm. I was like, no, no, because they wasn't there. They didn't know what had happened to Mm -hmm. me at the comedy club. It's like I was like, no, 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 no. We're not talking anymore. We broke up. Me and comedy (laughs) broke up. Like, but they didn't get the memo. And this was how I got my first laugh, because I was, you know, I couldn't be like a punk in front of these guys from Detroit. So. They was like, oh, come on up, come on up, come on. What's your name, brother? And they was like, name Omar. And I was like, oh, they did it. It was like, all right, come to the stage, y'all. Very comedian, friendly comedian. You know, come to the stage, just bring up Omar. And people started clapping. And they had a little more enthusiasm because it was somebody different than the guy that was up on stage. And I was like, oh, I just got to tell them the truth. So I went up there and was like, guys, listen, I'm really not a comedian. I just needed somebody to talk to. (laughs) And that was my first laugh. They was like, <laughs> and I was like, what? and then I was like, man, you making that chicken look real good. <laughs> Everything that I said, they laughed at. And then I was like, all right, that's, I'm just came here to hang out, man. I got a meeting happening over here. They was like, oh, here, come back. And I was like, I realized something at that moment. I did not know how to write. I didn't know what to say. I didn't have material. And that's when I come to Los Angeles. That's what I had to work out. So, so you come to LA. You know, you're you're fairly young. You're a single dad of three children. You're trying to pursue this career yeah. in, in comedy and in acting yeah. more specifically. Tell us a little bit about those early years, right? I imagine it was it was hard, right? It, it probably yeah. <laughs> it's tearing up. You know a what? <laughs> you know what, man? Let me tell you something. <sighs> It was um, some trying times in my life. I I literally was running away, yeah. okay? Because I was living like this, mashallah, kind of, I, I really like, when people tell me, I know exactly what the youth are talking about of how, who are you? 
I didn't know who I was. Like I had all of this knowledge, mm. if you will. Um, I was oh, look, look, look at this. I, I got married at seventeen, mm. right? And I had I got married again at nineteen. I had two wives, mm. right? At nineteen years old, living like a <laughs> sheikh, you know, mashallah, mashallah. Until one day I woke up I'm like I'm not no sheikh. What is this? What's going on, man? <laughs> this is this is a wrap. I'm out. I'm running away. <laughs> but I was like, I had the three kids. Um, I was like, I, and then I, then I, I, I started doing the whole Muslim work thing, like drive a taxi. <laughs> so the Muslim work thing. I love that. <laughs> the go-to Muslim men work thing. Hold on, right? Such a stereotype, but I did it. <laughs> I was doing all this, all the stereotypical stuff, like because why well, I, I don't know. Um, my environment, we, I, I don't, I really, honestly know that we have no idea how much our environment influence us. That we actually think that we are who we really mm. truly are. It really took for me to come outside of the environment so that I can find myself um, and find that balance in life to where. I love Islam. I, I love being Muslim. Well, how do I be Muslim and be me? Like, because everything was always blamed. Can't do this, haram. Can't do that, haram. Like, all the way down to, like, you know, oh, it's your socks and then your fingernails. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, oh, did I wipe behind my ears and your prayer ain't going to be accepted? And all of the stuff that I found out later is not the point of Islam <laughs> at all. But I had to go the long way to find all of those things out. And you know, it's just uh, it was some it was some pain. It's a lot of pain. But but what what kept you going, right? Because you kept pursuing that career path. I mean, you know, it was it wasn't a situation where you came to LA and immediately had this incredible success. You had to work for it, as you said. So so what kept you motivated and going to to pursue that acting path? Well, one of it was the um, the embarrassment of everybody was really talking about. You gonna go out there? You ain't gonna make nothing. What's wrong? Just real mm. stupid. That was one thing, and I, I was like, no, I just something was in me. Like I didn't, I couldn't, I couldn't accept that. Like, and it didn't work out. And I thought I was coming. Actually, I did come back to Detroit because everything just fell apart. But I didn't tell nobody. You know what I did? I went and I drove cab secretly. <laughs> I made some money. I paid for an apartment with a friend of mine through the mail in Las Vegas because it was close. And I left wow. again. <laughs> so you would yes. live in Vegas in because, an in LA? Yeah, but it was a lot of... I, I did Rush Hour 2 in oh, Vegas. Okay, okay. But the the, um, but the 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 biggest challenge was after I had got on that Greyhound bus, this was all a part of what made me keep going. And then actually seeing California, even though he, we had to sleep at the Greyhound bus station at night, the guy couldn't film that movie. Um, I went, <laughs> I went, we went, a stranger allowed us to stay with him who happened to be homosexual, Allah bless him, because he helped us. Like all of these different experiences made me not be like, you, you can't be homophobic. You can't be like, you can, all of the ideas of, you, you know, all mind. of the hate yeah, that yeah, you yeah. may adopt, you all of that goes out of the window. I'm meeting real people that's genuine, that's helping me and don't want anything mm-hmm. from me. And I was like, wow. Uh, uh, and then my, my friend, she wasn't Muslim, right? Because she's the one who bought the ticket and was a companion ride free. And she was like, <laughs> because because she said, you're going because I want to be an actor. He told you, you can bring four friends. I'm coming. It was supposed to be four of us. But she was like, I want to be an actress too. So you got to go because you my meal ticket. We straightforward in Detroit, <laughs> right? And, right? And, and I was like, yeah, well, I'm not going because I don't have no ticket. She said, oh, you're going. <laughs> and she went and got the ticket and companion ride free. I was like, I'm not getting on that bus. She was like, yes, you are. I was like, I'm going to fill out this application at Target, right? This is when Target started booming <laughs> back in the days. And I saw somebody had a $400 um, check, you know? And so I You're was like, like get, get it on really? the ground for Target. <laughs> right. I'm gonna, right. I was like, I'm going to put my beige and red on. And so I was like, if Target, call, if Target calls me, then I'm, I, I'm not getting on that bus. If they don't call me, I'll get on the bus. 
They didn't call. Wow. And Did so I got, I got kept my call? word. I got on the phone. Maybe they've been trying to get a hold said, of you for days, possible. and she was like, "Nah, we're yeah, going." It's possible. <laughs> but that's that was, and so all of those things to answer your question. All of those things happened where it it just kept me where I kept seeing little things like you would keep getting some I would keep getting a, a something that would keep me motivated, like meeting that guy. He put us. Let me tell you exactly how he did it. I don't want us to go over time, but we were in we were just trying to get information because you, we had slept at Greyhound. There was two nights and we had ran out of money like we expected to be on the movie set. Right. But it wasn't happening. The movie couldn't happen. And. The Greyhound was loud because of the speakers. And then we tied our bags to our hands because it was a lot of homeless people around at the same time. So we was like, look, let's get some directions. Let's get on the get get on the bus, find directions. Let's go and get some information so we can come back. That was the plan. When we walked inside of this casting, we saw a sign that said casting 2000. And we walked in there to get information. The phone rang and he was like, no. We told him our story first. He was like, just sign up. We said, we don't have no address here. Mm-hmm. We said, what? We don't have no phone number. We ain't have cell phones, right? He was like, what is going on? We told him what we did. We came out to do this movie. He was like, happens all the time, <laughs> right? Right. That was the homosexual part, right? Right. So, so and then he was like, the phone rung. And then he said, listen, I got two of them right here in my office. He was just touched by our story. This dude, I wish I could see him to this day. I'll give him a hug, man. He said, which one would you guys rather go on? Moesha or this movie called Ready to Rumble? I would tell you to do Ready to Rumble. It works for three days and it's long hours. And we were like, just like that. We was like, ready to rumble. And then we was like, where are we going to stay? We don't know. He said, don't worry. You guys can stay with me. I was like, nope, I'm not staying with him. Right. And she was like, just because he's gay don't mean he wants you. I was like, I heard about California. And then she was like, why are you tripping? You pray all the time. I was like, that is true. Right. (laughs) I was like, oh, no, it's so interesting that we stayed there. He let us stay there. And um, he. He didn't he didn't want anything. He was like, we stayed on set for 16 hours. He just was helping out two perfect strangers, gave us the address. Our checks was mailed to him. In that meantime, I had got a hold of my aunt who wasn't talking to my mother because she had became Muslim mm-hmm. years ago. And but she lived in Buena Park. And I got a hold of her. And then that's when she said, You guys can come and stay with us. So because all of these things was happening, it just kept pushing me where when I felt like there was, I was at the end of the road, something would happen. And I was like, wow, something else would happen. And that's what kept me in it. And it, I'm, it's so humbling. I, it just, it's really humbling. Yeah, that's awesome. So like the kindness of strangers very much contributed to, to your success in a lot of ways. That's pretty cool. Strange. Yeah. So yes. I want to go back to Halaliwood because I don't think we actually got to it. You're too interesting and we keep veering <laughs> off topic. Um, but so uh, like so in that. So again, like I think a, a good parallel can be drawn here too to Halaliwood through like like you are essentially a stranger being like Muslim artists should not have to compromise themselves. So like here is an outlet for that. Here is like an opportunity for that. So tell us about how that yes. came about and, and why you started it. Because I did four movies while I was in Hollywood, right? <clears throat> now I got experience. So from 2003 all the way to two, I had experience where I wanted to hold on to my integrity. And they were like, no. Some of the offers that I was getting in Hollywood from CBS and from um, UPN and from the agencies, um, I didn't want to take. I didn't want to put the dress on. I, you know, And they were like, who do you think you are? And I was like, I just don't want to do that. Like Those were the roles they were offering. And it was annoying to me um, that I, I, in order to be successful, I would have to compromise. I have to do something that I don't want to do. I was so excited about acting and the art of acting. And then I, I was like, I have, why do I, it has to be attached to something that I just don't want to do. And they were telling me things that make you play with your mind. Like if you're a good actor, you can do it, no problem. I mean, you are you don't have to be gay in real life, but if your character's gay and you're, you're a good actor, you can pull it off. And then I was like, man, that do sound pretty, that sounds pretty authentic, what he's saying right there, if I'm a good actor. And then I was like, no, but I am a good actor. I, I just don't want to do that. So 
when when after I did four feature films, I did two commercials, and I started um, doing comedy for Muslims. When I started doing comedy just for Muslims, and I was traveling, London was my first spot. Uh, I toured here. Um, then I ended up in Hong Kong, China, and Turkey, and I I, I was like, man. People don't know Muslims laugh because even I didn't. Even I didn't know Muslims laugh like that because it was haram. <laughs> so I was like, wow, this is crazy. And I said, well, I'm waiting on Hollywood to give me a role. Why don't we just do our own, make our own movies? And so I originally started out with Omar Regan Productions until I went to these students. Yeah, students are amazing. They have bright ideas. And they said um, they made this event. This event was called Halaliwood. And I was like, hey, that's my story. I'm leaving Hollywood. I'm going Halaliwood. They was like, yeah, welcome. And I lit it up that night. So I was like, that stuck with me. And I called them back and was like, listen, are you guys, what do you do? Say, like, no, we just do a student thing here at NJIT. And I was like, I really want to make this something. I want, I want, I want to take Halaliwood. I want to make it like, that's my thing. That's, and they was like, yeah, it's fine, man. Do your thing. I don't, I don't really know if they expected for me to do exactly what I did. <laughs> Because they was like something so small. And they just came out like, wow, this halali, are you serious? Like, I was like, oh, I'm really serious. I'm really serious that I believe us as Muslims, we have a voice. We have stories that's not even told on the main screen, on the big screen. We can pull this off. And I was just grateful to have their support. Like, go, 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 Omar, go, go. Halaliwood, Halaliwood. And so that's where the birth of Halaliwood. Cool. Yeah, yeah. and I, I had to make a movie. <laughs> and, and, and you did. You, you wrote, you directed, I, you I produced, did. and you co-starred in, uh, in American Sharia. So what was... Which was an accident. Okay, tell us about it. <laughs> tell us about it. That, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Okay, these Muslims, Allah bless them. They, boy, I love them. I love them. There's something <laughs> special. <laughs> Listen. I, I didn't go to school for directing. Now, I knew I was good at acting because even in comedy, what I did was to even hone my craft. I took some workshops. I, I, I took improv. So I and then I, I was hopping in and I was just turning down things. I was doing really great at auditions. Right. I was I just I turned down three things that may have even put me to somewhere else. Right. Which I'm grateful for my journey. But however, when I'm telling these 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 Muslims, I was like, listen, I got this beautiful idea. We can make our own. They was like, oh, oh my yeah. You know how many people came up with this idea and said they were gonna do it? I was like, yeah, but I got it. We could do it. I hit the Kickstarter and we got ninety thousand dollars after it says one hundred twenty two thousand, but after it was a couple of people that fell off and their monies didn't come through, and then Kickstarter took their money. We had ninety thousand dollars. I was like, listen, brother. First, I took two thousand and I filmed the mock trailer. Right. Because he was a director. I didn't know how to direct. He directed it. It was great. I was telling him everything I want. He knew the shots. I came back to him and was like, listen, I got I got ninety thousand dollars. Let's make the movie. Ah, uh, Omar, I'm sorry, man. I'm just not really feeling it, man. You're going to make this movie targeting Muslims as your audience. And it's just I mean, they're they're not going to support you. I'm just I'm sorry. And he was so cynical. He was. He was like all negative. And he's like, I got a, I got another project that I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to do. I was like, well, I, I'm going to have to. I know that I know the movie. So I wrote it. So I'm going to have to direct it because I wrote it. But I didn't know how to direct. So that was an accident. You know, and even my brother was like, you know, you're so full of yourself. <laughs> you're you're going to be the star. You're going to be the writer. You're going to be the producer. You're going to be the actor. What do, you, what do you think? I was like, but, I, but I'm inspired by Ben Affleck. <laughs> right? Well, be- Amazing. 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 <laughs> no, but, you know, I, I, I'm wondering what your thoughts are on. So maybe to back up first with Halaliwood. Was the inspiration to create content for Muslims or was it to create content that represented Muslims in a way that would be more relatable to the mainstream? It was it was kind of, it was directed to target everyone. Right. 
I wanted people to get to know who Muslims really was. I was like, guys, they would watch our movies. I didn't want to make them all the bad people. I just wanted us to be able to be represented as who we really truly are. And we're all different because we all have different backgrounds. And so our stories like uh, Baba Ali yeah. is, is yeah, Iranian. Yeah. People don't even know that about that guy. You know, and he's be flying around like out of all the time, but he's not, you know, he's, he's Iranian, right? Still need to leave Middle Eastern, right? And so my whole vision was, to grab people that was Muslim, but they were different. So I didn't want to make black movies. Like I was like, that's already being, that's already happening. I wanted to make movies that um, represent Muslims, but everybody would right. enjoy it. That's what I wanted right. to do. Right. And do you find that? That's what yeah, I plan. Yeah. No, and, and do you find that that is happening more within the mainstream now? Is it more, is the environment more, accepting of that type of content or do you think we still have some a long ways to go no i think we have a long way to go we may only have one or two shows i like what um what rami is doing and, and telling his story yeah. um but i'm also excited and happy because i'm not i i'm not doing it the hollywood mm -hmm. way i really want to make films where nobody has to cringe you know, you can watch it with your family and don't feel embarrassed or don't feel right. shy. Um, right. I, I, and, and that goes across the board for every family, not just Muslim family, like for every family. So I, 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 I have a vision. I just feel like nobody really knows how to yeah. do it. That's what. And if they do know how to do it, like as writing, um, then it, it like it has to be because sometimes it's too Muslim-y. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's like, it's not Muslim, really. They just have the garb on. And it's like it, the way that they try to mix things up. I was like, ah. Um, but I did see, I did see, or I saw some stuff at the yeah. Moscow Film yeah. Festival that blew me away. <laughs> I was like, I like yeah. this, right? But the problem is, to answer your question, it's not right. mainstream. Right. So even those, 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 some of the films that was there that was amazing at Moscow's mainstream wise, which is the answer to your question, it's not out. So they don't have an avenue, which is what I was like, oh, love, please, because at Hollywood, we had the money, right? I would call those people at Moscow's, those right, filmmakers, right, sure. and be like, we want to, we got the money to produce yeah. your film. We want, we need this out in the mainstream yeah. and we have the platform. So that, and those films, you can watch it with mm. everybody, right? You don't have to cringe. You don't have to close your eyes or you don't have to, you know, I mean, whether it was made for by a Muslim or not, you don't have to do all that, right? Um, and I'm, oh, I've just lost the point that I was trying to make to you, but, <laughs> right? but the whole goal is hiring Muslimas. Whether she, whether she has a hijab, whether she doesn't have hijab, whether she has niqab, whether she doesn't right. have a niqab. Like I hired a sister in niqab because she wore niqab. I hired a sister that didn't wear hijab. I hired a sister that did wear hijab. And I wanted, uh, that was Halaliwood because I'm tired of, I'm tired of that thing too. I could tell you what the sheikh actually told me. He's a sheikh, sheikh, like with the title sheikh and not just part of his name. Um, <laughs> He says to me, Omar, don't put pretty women inside of your movie. This would make you have a very big sin. And I was like, what? What are you saying? Don't put pretty women in the movie. If the guy sees the pretty woman, you put her inside of the movie, and he sins for looking at her, you're also going to get that sin. I was like, Shaq, this don't make sense. Who's the person that's saying who's pretty and who's not? <laughs> Good point. <laughs> and my brother was with me. My brother was with me. He was like, yeah, so do you have somebody saying which is the ugly, <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, ugly sisters? Like, how's that even make sense? How's that even sound right? Like, oh, if she's Muslim and she's ugly, she's okay. <laughs> Put her in the movie. Oh, she's... <laughs> and like, why is it only it for It don't the even women make too? sense. Yeah. You know, what about good looking right. guys? I mean, I'm sure the you, ugly know, brothers, you probably make man, me, uh, <laughs> some thoughts happen. <laughs> I'm... I am promising you, I promise you, I'm using that. I'm sorry, that Sheikh is going to get it in my film. I'm, he's going to be like, Haram Omar. I was younger back then. I was like, it's okay. So was I. 
I listen to you all of that kind of rhetoric. I was like, we doing away with that here at Hollywood. All I want everybody to do is maintain their self-discipline, mm. their integrity. I don't want a sister to feel like, oh, I'm I'm Muslim, so do I have to kiss him? Do I have to be in the bed with him? You don't have to do none of that. I'm not interested in making movies to sell sex. I'm interested in making movies to tell authentic stories. And when there is love there, we don't have to show that. That's like, we have enough of that out there. But we can creatively, artistically, we can express that and people would feel the love. So all of our sisters don't have to worry about what they, that movie Bombshell. (laughs) I don't know if y'all seen that. (laughs) They don't. They don't have to worry about the, you know, the Harvey Weinstein stories that's plaguing the Hollywood to the, today. We're already focused on, man, what's your, what's important for you to protect? Those are the things that I want to know. We want you to be a part of this film. What's important for you? Man, I don't want to wear a hijab. I don't want to be made to seem like, not a problem. That's what I don't want to seem fake, not a problem. Here, got a role for you. What's important for you? I want to do it differently than than Hollywood does it. Like you have to, and 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 if you are a good actor, then you can put this hijab on and make yourself <laughs> the best Muslim ever. I'm like she could probably the better Muslim than all of us. Like we, we got to stop doing that. I know some sisters in hijab that was um, dangerous <laughs> <laughs> to say the least. I knew brothers in thobes that was on drugs. I like I so I'm yeah. not. I'm not trying to fall for the image of what Islam, I need the Islam to be your character, what you're holding on to. And so that's what I want to get back to. And so in all of my films, that's what I'm writing. I'm right. And I'm inspired by some, some stuff Hollywood has out. Um, Like I'm making, I wrote a film now in my quarantine (laughs) that I believe everybody's going to love this movie. Um, is I, I'm only I only tell you the the theme of it is two brothers, black American brothers in Pakistan. What could go wrong? <laughs> <laughs> is that the tagline? <laughs> That's pretty impressive. <laughs> <laughs> what are we doing over there? <laughs> Starring Omar Regan and Preacher oh, Holmes. Amazing. <laughs> is, is that actually Listen, like? Is he uh, is he attached? Oh, it's that's real. Amazing. It's wow. real. Yes, he is attached. I'm excited. I got goosebumps. Yeah. There. <laughs> this that, movie. Yes. Listen. That's incredible. Ah, uh, uh, it's, it's really nice. I have a film in South Africa with Zane Pika. Um, it's like the Little Rascals meets Rugrats. <laughs> like, um. Meet Stand By yeah. Me. Oh, oh, it's really, it's good. What's it called? Um, I took all of that. It's like, What's it called? Huh? it's about, oh, it's how, it's about the orphans. So it's like, um, have you seen Rabbit Proof Fence? No. Okay, so a little bit about this story, really short. These orphans um, are living on the street. And how are they making it day to day? And it's not a documentary. Uh, one gets ex- inspired to say you got to find peace with inside of yourself, even as a even as a child. And this girl wants to find peace by any means, and so she has a strong influence with the rest of her fellow orphans um, to say, "Guys, we need to find peace." And this guy, he found it at the ocean, and I want to get to the ocean. And they're like, no peace at the ocean. And so this movie follows them when they leave Johannesburg and make it way, make their way to Cape Town. And I tell you, it is a tear oh, jerker. Goodness. It's um, <laughs> it's it's so touching, man. Like, but as kids, I I promise you, I cried when I wrote this um, the screenplay. Wow, I cried writing the screenplay. It was it happened to me the first time that I was like, oh, I felt this. This was amazing. And I was like, I'm tripping because I wrote it. But I, I went to go and ask, you know, Zane. He was like, Mm-mm, this scene right here. And I told Zane, I was like, dude, I cried when that scene come. That's how I know it's not from me. I just happened to be. And I called another good friend of mine, Amir Suleiman, because we had a writing session together. He was like, that's it. When you when it happens like that, you know it's not from you. You are just the vessel. Mm. You are like you're just the messenger, and it's your job to pass it through. And that 
movie. I even found the song that's gonna play right at that moment. It's like things like when we we were talking about what keeps you in it, even though like my first movie didn't do what I wanted it to do, and what keeps me in it. It's things yeah. like this behind the scenes that keeps me so motivated that I'm excited for Hollywood and what we what we working on and and where we are like mentally, um, spiritually. And, and artistically what's happening and i know that it's attracting other yeah. artists mm. so well, when, when can we expect those uh, those two movies to be released i mean obviously it's, it's well de- COVID 19 <laughs> came it's, yeah it's, 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 it's probably yeah. somewhat dependent on the so, world uh, opening back up so, but, uh, <laughs> so COVID, so so COVID came well, and no, COVID? <laughs> COVID, COVID. you ain't nah. never met COVID. good don't meet COVID. <laughs> He only 19. Okay, but this guy has a strong yeah. influence, right, over the world. Right? Oh, man. <laughs> but is, is, is it kind of like scheduled for you, as soon as things come back online, these will get going? It is, but let me tell you, this is the reality. Like, subhanAllah, man. I got um, my, I was, I, I had to be disciplined. I had to be like, wait. Faithful Neighbors, Faithful Neighbors. So I have a partnership and investors for Faithful Neighbors, right? And Faithful Neighbors is where I attack religion. I just, I come after all of these Muslim, Christians, and Jews inside of this film, right? And um, it's, it's, um, I've, been, I've been working on this one since mm-hmm. American Sharia, right? And we were filming the mock trailer to lock in this $3 million budget. March. Wow. Mm-hmm. And where through whole Ramadan, like COVID came and he shut us down, you know, and Alhamdulillah, it's like, okay, you know, so now we are standing by because it's a little difficult to film now. We got to do, um, cause also what I, oh, can I tell you this? Can I tell you this? <laughs> With the plan for Halaliwood is that we're not wanting to stay like independent, like what I did with the uh, American mm-hmm. Sharia. What I want to do is bring Muslims inside of the union. So with me being a Screen Actors Guild member, and I've been there for since mm-hmm. 2014, which I've been eligible since 2000 <laughs> from Chris Tucker, um, Rush Hour 2, but I didn't know no better. I, I learned a lot of lessons, <laughs> okay? So, I told, like I told, um, it's a penalty that we have to pay to bring artists in that's not um, oh. in the sack. But there's a way to do it, um, and so I, we're become we become stronger, more Muslims inside of the Screen Actors mm. Guild, and have and having this plan that the way we're doing it with Halaliwood is bringing maybe maybe because they it hit us with a penalty so we may only be able to bring depending on the budget that we have two to three three to four at a time but it it makes us stronger because now once he's inside um of the union and she's inside of the union automatically the contract goes Mm -hmm. amazing but i can't do what i did with the first film I brought everybody. They none of them acted mm-hmm. before. <laughs> none of them was on the, was in the union, and I made this movie. But it, it doesn't help us to come right. outside of that. You know that in that independence. So we need to be able to take uh, they Muslims. They need to be mm-hmm. seen. They need to. You know what I mean. They need to have this influence inside of this industry, and there are just not enough of these good people that have the same like mind of man. Look, you know integrity self-discipline you know let's 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 do this and let's create along yeah, with art yeah. so uh, what, that's our plan for halaliwood that we'll do so we are going to make sure that we are industry so we will be sag films alhamdulillah um making it a union project and that's what i was talking to buna muhammad, buna muhammad about uh, buna muhammad was like Ugh. and i was like but there's still a lane for you <laughs> Because Buna, I love Buna. Listen, yeah. I want. Listen, Buna. I'm on this film with Buna, right? Uh, I did Buna's latest film. It's not out yet. And I told Buna, I said, "We gotta, we have to really push your film. Can't do it by ourselves, like I was doing with American Sharia. In this next film, even though it's independent, we have to push this film because it's a good film. And it, the only challenge that it has is that we just need more support. You know what I mean? And. Uh, I was like, if you make a union, he was like, ah, <laughs> all those union rules. 
And it's true because the union have some amazing rules, but I believe for the long run. So I'm looking, I partner up with Bruno. And I'm like, well, I can't do this union thing. I'm coming over here with you. But and then I'll push the union thing over, you know, however long it takes for us to get it where we really want it. Right on, right on. So Omar, before we before we wrap up, we like oh we gotta uh, go. <laughs> no, we're not quite done yet. We're not quite done yet. So before we wrap up, we we, we we like to do some. It's still yeah, daylight yeah. over there. Oh, we got a it's lot of daylight over there. No. Yeah. Uh, but uh, before we before we do close, we we like to do a series of rapid fire questions. Okay, these are questions where first thing that comes to your mind, you just spit it out, no thought required. Are you ready? And there's no wrong answers. Uh, 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 yes, there it is. is. <laughs> no. yeah, no. <laughs> we can't be held liable. But, are you ready? Okay. Okay, yeah. let's go. First question: What's your favorite stand-up special? Oh, oh! <laughs> First thing that comes to mind. Some uh, minds. <laughs> <laughs> Solid answer. Solid answer. Deal. Um, Wu Tang or NWA? Wu Tang. What's right. your most rewatched movie of all time? Oh, Life. Oh, okay. All nice. right. right Eddie on. Murphy and Martin Lawrence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. True. yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, what's your favorite kind of potato? Oh, like the way oh. of eating it. Like fries, like fries mashed, potato. scallops. Fries. Fries. Okay. fries. Like regular fries, waffle fries. Wings. Regular fries. All right. All right. All right. Favorite. Right With right the right skin on, on it. Ooh, yeah. Okay. 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 All right. <laughs> and final question. I know with your work, you've been able to travel all over the world. What's your favorite place that you've done a show? Oh. And, and we're just gonna assume Edmonton's number one, so we're gonna we're gonna go with number two. <laughs> number Listen, two. Yeah. why do you see this? I like Edmonton. Um, it was nice and quiet, and you know, I didn't know where. We are very happening. <laughs> yeah, what are you talking about? It's loud as hell. Really. No. Okay, you, you can make you it louder. What? What's your favorite travel destination in general? Oh man, so it's so many of. I like uh, Malaysia. I like Zanzibar. I like Ghana. <laughs> <laughs> it's so bad. I Tell really like. Oh, I like South Africa. I've, I've been there like 10, 12, 12 times. Amazing. Cape Town. Amazing. Have you been to Cape Town? I haven't. I haven't. I haven't oh, been there, no. You have oh. to go. It is amazing. So are, you t- are you taking us? We're gonna. Or? We're gonna. Yeah. <laughs> hey, listen. We're gonna go on a ro- we're gonna Remind go on a me. It, it, listen, yeah. I'm saying this. I'm really being serious. Please remind me. The minute you see me posting that we're filming. Um, because South Africa may free up before um, 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 the States. Mm -hmm. But, you know, that one is a partnered film. That's a a Halaliwood and Zane Bika Studios film project. If this one comes off the ground first, I'm posting that we're about to ready to go film in South Africa. If you see me post on the Instagram, be like, Omar, what's up? You got to come on. What's up? Because I want more people to experience, especially you guys represent Moscow. It's like, it's a big deal. I could, if, I could actually sing us in South Africa. You know yeah, that's okay I'm with down. me. I could, I could, you know what I'm saying? I could, I could definitely have that conversation and say, guys, we, <laughs> you know, five thousand dollars inside of this budget. We need to bring these people over. Right okay. on. Okay. It's, yeah. You know, all right. We got, we got it on. on video, yeah, it's been on recorded, audio. man. I we said got it. Multiple you know, platforms. I'm a firm <laughs> believer <laughs> in speaking things into existence. Yeah, I love it. I love and if somebody it. tell me you're gonna be five thousand dollars short on making this movie, I'm gonna be like, yeah. really? Come on, man. We could do better than that. <laughs> much, much Amazing. appreciated. Amazing. Well, Incredible. thank you. That's a that's a pretty a generous, wonderful Africa offer. Right Let's put yeah. it out there. Say yeah. yeah. Exactly. Say yeah. yeah. We're in. Oh, yeah. we're saying yes. Yeah. I'm pretty sure. I'm in. Yeah, we're down. I'm in. Uh, Amazing. Oh, Omar, thank you so much for your time. Before we let you go, where can people find you and your work? Man, how they lot. Um, Halaliwood.com, which we're revamping that. Oh, I didn't even tell you guys. I'm sorry. No, well, no, it's gotta be the next time. Gotta be the next oh, time. No, are you sure? You can you can say there it now. Next time. Time. No, listen, let me, let me just tell you this. Yeah. Um, we also started the Halaliwood Foundation. And oh, okay. the Halaliwood Foundation um is catered to our children. So the vision is we're making what we can call like the Muslim Sesame Street. Mm. <laughs> but it's from the voices of our children. 
So is that I, what was the cartoon YouTube videos that yes, I saw? Those yes. were so cute and cool. So, oh man. So listen, after we had 20 million views on the law made everything and cotton yeah. candy sky. And I was like, I had been saying, I want our children to look up to themselves, like, mm-hmm. and look up to their fellow classmates. So we created this thing. Uh, well, the Halaluka Foundation, I didn't want the parents to have to pay for it because animation is expensive. So mm-hmm. I made a nonprofit organization where we can still take the kids to do good work, to feed the hungry. To do all, but the art is Art Wins is where we are. Our theme is Art Wins. And through art, we're going to be able to take care of all of our neighborly needs for all of our fellow human beings who need. And, I, and at the same time, we're having these children be creative and write. So I'm going to post now, since I've been over here, I'm working on that and writing this uh script with Idrisi, but I have 10 kids scripts that we did a right word, wording right, uh, right, uh, writer's workshop. I have a husband and wife animator team out of Bosnia oh, wow. that yeah. is animating and it's all, um, I mean, I, I don't want to say it's all free, but it is all from our nonprofit so that mm. people could see the work that we're doing with the youth. And these writing workshops, and we start them early to be able to get their ideas out of their head, and then put it on side, put it on the paper, and then we can we can re you know how do I say reeducate our youth against all of the bigotry and the hate and the misunderstanding and the rhetoric that all of us have inside of all of our families and communities. And I, I that that's our mission for that because I mean I'm sure just like you guys know, I, I mean, there's just a lot of pain behind the smile. Um, I love yeah. to have fun, but there's, you know, my father was killed through this nonsense. And um, it's, um, I have some, my uncle and my brother uh, was all charged with nonsense and, and had to fight cases to get exonerated. And it's just mm-hmm. a lot of nonsense that happens. But if our children today learn not to hate fellow human beings and what Islam is really, truly about, of you uh, the of for humanity and honoring and respecting fellow human beings just like you want for yourself man the, we can make the world a better place and we can start yeah. here so Hollywood foundation so you guys can find me at omar regan that's o-m-a-r-r-e-g-a-n on instagram i'm stronger there i haven't been on there in a while um <laughs> i've been i've been in the lap with the pen in the pack <laughs> like Dr. Dre said, I've been in the lab with the pen in the pad trying to get Hollywood off. <laughs> right? um, but there's it. That's it. Uh, at Omar Regan, Hollywood.com is there. Um, uh, at Hollywood, at Hollywood Foundation. The Hollywood Foundation is coming out very soon. Um, I would say within the next few weeks. So we are animating. Oh, the biggest thing is that we're taking the image of the child and the voice of the child. So we're not just teaching them to write. We're teaching them to voice. We're teaching them voiceover acting so that they could be themselves when they look and be like, I did that. And it inspires them to be like, oh, I want to do something else. I want to do something else. Mm -hmm. And we have all the way up to 16 years old so far. Amazing. That's very cool. It feels so humbling to be doing this, (laughs) Sophia. That's awesome. Well, thank yeah. you so much for ending that on such a badass note. Yeah, that's that's yeah. important work, man. That's that's incredible. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. I'm serious. These kids, I believe one of these kids is going to have a film. I'm going to tell them to submit it to Moscow's Film Festival when, yes. co- when COVID leaves. Yes. When COVID yes. leaves. When COVID, <laughs> COVID yeah. leaves. When the COVID comes. <laughs> I mean, animated work, you know, that's the one medium that you could probably still do throughout COVID. So... Hey, yes. Keep it working. Yeah. Yeah. They have a it's film good. they want to submit. We had an animated film a few years ago. Yeah, we've had that a was really we've had a few. Yeah, have, yeah, we yeah. had more than I. Yeah, I only yeah, saw yeah. one. Um, yeah. But yeah, it was pretty cool. So that yeah, tell tell them, get them ready. To get them awesome. ready. Get them ready, man. <laughs> get them ready. Amazing, Omar. Thank you so much again for your time, man. Uh, no problem, a, man. A thank you guys. Oh, and, and congratulations you, to you guys again because you guys also had that Ayana Sharif at Moscow, yes. and Ayana yeah. Sharif is just did the Spike Lee the Five yeah. Bloods, the five bloods. Yeah. yeah. And so it's a, it's a big deal, man. It's like yeah, so connected. Oh, 
it, it no. is. And we're starting to see that. We're starting to see a lot of the filmmakers who have come through the Oscars in the last few years start to have some really strong success, you know, yeah. whether it's in, in writing or in editing or in, you know, filmmaking in different ways. So we're, uh, we're, we're, we're fortunate to be a part of the environment that no, is that's creating. Right. That's yeah. right. So it's been, it's been amazing. If y'all so. get millions of dollars before me, you guys can executive produce um, any one of we'll these. We'll keep that in mind. We will yeah. keep that in mind. <laughs> you're, you're top of our list for our first million. Be, don't worry. It could definitely be, you know, <laughs> a Moscars. South Africa. Yeah. yeah. It could be a Moscars film production in association yeah. with Hollywood. I don't mind. We Inshallah, can take the back seat. Inshallah. Wrong, Inshallah. Yeah. We just, let's put that out there, too. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Speak it into existence. <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. Awesome. Omar, thank you again, as always, man. This All was, right, this shukran, was fantastic. Shukran, shukran. Thank, <laughs> thank you. All right. Salamu alaikum. Thank you so much for joining us for another episode of The Halal Gap. You can find us online by searching Moscow's Film Festival on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Join we us. hope you can join us next time. That's the one. <laughs> <laughs>